Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 21st and the 28th of July 2018. You know, if there is a week that astrologers have been talking about during the last year, it's this one. This is a peaking time in all kinds of, 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 uh, of ways. Definitely we can feel that Mars retrograde, that Mars that is a fifth of its usual distance from Earth astronomically we feel it mars the god of war of everything made within each and every one of us our initiatives our base instincts our desires our self-definition our individualization processes they're all very attentive and aware right now and there's a feeling of necessity of needing to take things forwards and not much patience about that at all in aquarius it's about our role in the group it's about rebelling uh, 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 against the group or taking the group forward there's a lot of that happening and just on this week Mars is returning to the south node we're dealing with a lot of karma we're dealing with a lot of past shit that we did not actually uh, clean well that is still meddling along with us that is like chains upon our legs dragging itself in the dust and then we have this eclipse on the 27th, which opposes that, which is, I'm sorry, conjunct that Mars. So on that day, when we have a full moon and a full lunar eclipse that's going to be seen mostly from Eastern Europe, but also from Western Europe, some of it, Israel, uh, Middle East, uh, Asia, all going to be under this eclipse it's a very prominent eclipse for the state of israel and remember an eclipse affects six months before six months after especially a month before and a month after and during the time and this eclipse exactly to the degree opposes israel's natal moon and for leo this mars opposes during the eclipse that natal moon and this eclipse happens in the fourth house of Israel. So we have a double lunar signature. Historically, Israel goes to war every time that Mars ends its retrograde. Israel is under attack during the time of the retrograde. It doesn't retribute. It doesn't uh, 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 react as strong as it can. And then when the retrograde is towards the ending and ends, retribution comes out sometimes too strongly and swiftly and again we can see very aggressive you know I'm not the kind of astrologer that would like to say that a war is coming for Israel but we can see that the borders of Israel are already heating up there's missiles from the north there's missiles from the south rockets from the south and protests let's see what happens hopefully we can avoid more bloodshed pain misery hate and all that vicious cycle but definitely israel could be under attack with that mars opposing uh, conjunct the eclipse to the degree opposing her natal moon in the fourth house the natal moon is in the tenth so we could be a lot we can be judged a lot as well definitely a very intense time and if you have in your personal chart any important points in these degrees in aquarius in these degrees that i'm talking about close five degrees from uh, the fourth degree of aquarius five degrees from uh, the fourth degree of leo or taurus and scorpio squaring it if you have any personal planets or angles or the nodes near these points you'll be more affected by this eclipse and a lunar eclipse is about changing our personal viewpoint what we um the sponge the filter 
that really borders between that infinite experience of life, which is objective, hello Georgia, and the subjective, the personal, what actually enters from this vast experience and becomes a personal experience and is part of my own personal identity and provides personal peace and security, sense of security. Hello Georgia, anything to say about the moon? No. Cats, you know what the difference between the cats and dogs is? When you call a dog, he comes to you. When you call a cat, he takes a message and, get back, and gets back to you. So, yeah. Anyway, so we're having this eclipse on the 27th, and, and, and this is about personal subjective change, the way we see the world and experience the world, and our window to the world, personal experience with the world, and emotional change. This is about inner work. In the old Israeli scriptures, and the old Hebrew scriptures, they say, that if you are a student of knowledge, a lunar eclipse is good for you, a solar eclipse is good for the Gentiles, but bad for Israel. I hate these expressions, but what they mean is that most cultures deal with the material aspects of this existence. Israel supposedly deals with the inner spiritual aspects. And so, any development on that realm is a good thing if you are a student of knowledge. And if you are more reliant on the materialistic world, the outside world, then solar eclipses would be good for you, and lunar eclipses would be unstabling, because you would get a glimpse of something that maybe you would want to avoid, just in Jewish history. Anyway. Let's go down to the weekdays. We're having a Mercury retrograde as well coming up, if everything wasn't enough. <clears throat> so, Saturday the 21st, good day to enjoy amongst people. I'm talking Central European time. So if you are living in the Pacific, Australia, 10 hours forward, you are living in the Pacific, United States, 10 hours back. It's a good day to spend with people this Saturday. Friday night is as well. There's a sextile to Venus. It's a good time for satisfaction. There's a conjunction to Jupiter. Go ahead. Enjoy yourself. Take, entertain people. Go out. Be amongst people that you love or just someone you love. You don't have to make it a crowd, you know. And this is a great time for expanding your knowledge. It's a great time for enjoying nature. It's a, you know, there's a trying to Neptune as well. Anything artistic or spiritual is good on that day. A lot of inner strength. Just at night time, late night, Saturday night, there could be, the, the, the communication lines could be tangled up. If you do need to pass some messages out, or if you have any cerebral interactions, make sure that you are understood. Um, our minds could be a little discombobulated. Sunday the 22nd, Moon is in Sag. Uh, there's a grand fire trine in the sky that I love between the sun and the moon and Chiron, the wounded healer. This is a time for great personal healing. Believe it, folks. If there are things that you've been dragging through this life and you want to get rid of, if you want to transcend, if you want to provide a healing to the self, Aries, Chiron and Aries and that, very personal, very... Um, very personal, very subjective, very creative, and, and, and you have to experience it when it's in a fire trial. It's very, you have to go through it personally. It's not about learning about something new. It's not about some new idea. It's about going through things and actually experiencing them in a way that liberates you from that pain or wound or that syndrome that takes away that evil from your blood, that evil, that bad blood, that drains away that bad blood. Remember that Chiron is about lessening, not about adding. Um, so there's something very expansive because for me a trine is like putting Jupiter in the middle. So it's a grand Jupiterian trine in fire 
there's a lot of Sagittarian energy here. It's about expansion. It's about optimism. It's about kindling that fire of belief and faith. It's about doing what we believe in and being optimistic that change can happen. And yes, I encourage you, do that in your personal life. Do that in the communal life. Great healing can come. Miracles can happen. Better believe it. Just for added flavor, we're having Mars sextiling this, bringing in more vitality, more uh, a sense of immediacy. But that Chiron is squaring Saturn during these days. That means that if you don't keep it real, if you don't have a discourse on an eye-to-eye -eye level with reality, you're going to be judged and you can be depressed because of it. So watch out. So, um, very energetic day and very energetic night, the 22nd. That's Sunday night with a sextile to Mars. Um, go jogging or have some fun. Anyway, the 23rd, moon moves into Leo. Happy birthday, all you Leos. I love you. You deserve it. Um, you deserve the honor that you ask for. You're doing it with your heart. Dance on stage and infect us with your joie de vivre. So, on a satisfactory level, the 23rd, not that good. Watch out from um, differences in relationships, from misunderstandings. We could be very sensitive through that time. The 24th, communication is much better already, but, <clears throat> you know, we're heading into a time in our relationships regarding our income or just our satisfaction from ourselves, our self-value, that we could be a little shaken on the one hand, but we could be much more naive, idealistic, romantic on the other. It's a time that we could very much enjoy our relationships and be with much more in touch with our satisfaction because there's a sextile between Venus, the planet of relationships and satisfaction, to Jupiter. Something is expansive going on. It's good. It's optimistic. And there's an opposition to Neptune. And that opposition to Neptune brings that romance on the one hand, but that illusion and naivety on the other. So keep it real also in your relationship so that we don't wake up with a ringing slap to our face by lady or mistress reality. Um, the 24th, if we're not too naive, if we are looking at the small details, is a good day. The 24th and the 25th are good days for career issues, for signing deals, for planning projects, for making agreements. Um, there's a conjunction between Mercury and Regulus. There is a moon coming into Capricorn conjuncting Saturn. So on the 25th already, we could be much more judgmental and cold and harsh. Watch out. But on the other hand, we can take big things on our shoulders. We could look at things strategically. We could be very old and wise and reserved and professional about things. And, and, and you know, draw within the lines, so to speak. <clears throat> um, but this conjunction, moon conjunction, Capricorn moon conjunct Saturn, which is a very harsh, cold energy, is going to square Chiron. So this is also a, a emotionally a sensitive day. Be careful not to hurt yourselves or others on that day. Not to judge too harshly, too. Thursday, the 26th, um, Mercury is turning retrograde. It's a, Actually, it's a great day to enjoy yourself. It's a great day to be with people. It's a great day to go outside. It's a great day to have fun, go see a movie, go to the gallery, do something. It's a great night for intimacy as well and for passion. Just don't be too dramatic on that day. And remember to leave a lot of room for mistakes, for delays, for change of plans. Be flexible. Don't think that this day could work like a Swiss clock because then you'll be frustrated. And that Mercury retrograde is going to take about three weeks until... Um, August 9th, it's going to be between the 23rd degree of Leo and I think the 3rd or the 6th degree of Leo. And of course, if you have planets or points at that place or opposing it in Aquarius, squaring it in Scorpio or Taurus, 
um, then, of course, you'll be affected more by this retrograde. And we'll be stepping out of Mercury's shadow, I think it's September 2nd, and Mercury is going to, things are going to feel much better from September 2nd. But already uh, on, on the 9th of August, we'll feel some of this different energy uh, moving back into normal. Mercury retrograde is not a time to stop breathing or planning or making decisions. It's a time to look at things a little differently and look at all the small prints and see things from a different viewpoint. But I actually signed both apartments, this one and the last one, on a Mercury retrograde and I was very happy. Lived years in each one of them. So, myth, leave the myth alone. Just um, look at things. Look at things. Allow yourself to see things from a different angle. Anyway, so, um, Friday the 27th, hot, hot, Friday. We're having the, 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 the lunar eclipse, and that means that there's a full moon, that, that that sun is opposing Mars, that that Mars is conjunct the full moon that is under eclipse. <clears throat> so, and everything is, 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 is squaring Uranus, just for an added uh, uh, velocity and, and, and uh, explosiveness. There's not a lot of patience going on, you know, or going around. There's a great need to go forward and change. And we could be too harsh, we could be too immediate, we could be too aggressive could be too impatient. So watch yourselves. And of course this has to do a lot with our role in the group. This has to do a lot with our uh, leadership within the group, taking the group forward or learning from the group to do something of value, to actually participate, to take my place on stage. This is about self-realization. This is about what I love. This is about love in general. This is about my kids. This is about my friends my social circles. These are the subjects of, these, of this eclipse and of course the house that these fall in, that the, the, the Leo Aquarius axis falls in within your natal chart. Saturday the 28th, good day for <coughs> relationships, intimacy, uh, good day to have fun, just don't overdo it. There's a square to Jupiter in the afternoon but there's an exact trine between Venus and Pluto on that day. So a lot of the strength comes from inside. A lot of the intimacy can be very authentic. A lot of passion too. Enjoy. And with that optimistic note, I want to thank you for listening, liking, commenting, and spreading these videos because, well, that's how the algorithm on Facebook shows them to more people. And that's a great way of you thanking me for this information. So I really, really appreciate it. And of course, there's another group opening in English. You could study with me from whenever you, wherever you want through the computer or your smartphone. <clears throat> so if you are interested in the fall group for beginners, just th this is the time to contact me. And of course for private session, consultations, private lessons, any question you might have about evolutionary astrology, I'm here. This is Boaz Feiler wishing you a very pleasant weekend and a very beautiful week ahead. Goodbye.